Welcome to Real Flicks Reviews, like a book club for people who hate reading. This month, we're doing grab bags, so Ryan picked the movie Made, made in 2001. We bring you movie news, and this week we have Jonathan Charney, James Stevens, and Ryan Preston. Here's the description of Made, made in 2001. Two aspiring boxers, lifelong friends, get involved in a money laundering scheme through a low-level organized crime group. And, um... The Jews are organized. Holy shit that I wish somebody take out Vaughn. I really hate Vaughn. I mean, I'm not a big fan of him to begin with, but I really just... I wanted his friend, what was it, John Favreau, just to, like... John Favreau. What, do, uh, just do a Gibbs and hit him on the back of the head. Do something. I don't know. I mean, off that fight, you know, I don't think he really has it in it to do it. I mean, I've seen schoolgirls fight better than that. That's pretty... Seriously. That was like the saddest thing. And he has a record of 5-5-1, five, five, and one, according to the movie. I'm not quite sure how he got the five wins. Well, he was fighting <laughs> bums like Homer did. Did the well, guy just not show up? fighting his friend. It, to me, that, that scene was like 5-5-1, like, uh, five, five, and one, and then you find out they're friends. It's like, oh, you guys have just fought each other 11 times. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, but the only problem, I've seen this guy fight his friends, and it's brutal. So that's... <laughs> well, I'm a sweetheart. <laughs> says who i did i just did it you weren't listening oh i see so you're tab i'm a sweetheart oh and you're a tad bit biased i'm not i gotta turn your mic down i'm not biased you're biased oh. you just said it wasn't anyways but um you know i agree like fa uh vince vaughn did a fantastic character in this one i think he, did, he pulled it off with a character that you love to hate you just want to hate him see i think you love to murder i mean i i actually think this is the first movie that that really wanted homicide to be legal <laughs> I mean, well, you want to draw first but, blood but at the same time the i mean like i i totally get your your feeling because i have the same the same feeling about his character but that's that was the point of the <laughs> character everybody else wanted to kill him too you know, yeah. the, the one, one of the reasons I picked this, like, um, uh, aside from it kind of just being one of the lesser known uh, Favreau and Bond movies, everyone always quotes uh, uh, Swingers. But this one, way, way more of a, of, a, of an annoying character on on Vince Vaughn's part. But um, this this is we I think we all have that friend who's seen way too many movies and sort of lets those movies inform his decision. This is a guy who's seen way too many mobster movies. Oh, and, yeah. Wants gonna everything to be us. like like the movies, you know. I'm still waiting for my you know watch with a laser in it. <laughs> or the watch what? from Bond, the Golden Eye. Oh, your watch with a laser in it. Yeah. The only problem is all these watches. Oh, I, thought, I thought you had a problem with Italian people for a second. <laughs> no, that too sometimes. <laughs> you want a wop? He wants a wop that tells time. Is that what you're saying? I mean, look, I I, I heard what I thought. What I heard. Um. Oh, um, I'm trying to think of the the redeeming qualities for me in this movie. I guess one would be the atmosphere. It this movie does project. I mean, it really does have a decent atmosphere. The colors are good. Even the storytelling in this movie is good. the The better part of this movie to me is kind of their boss, Max, the Jew. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Who just. Who you can tell he loves uh, he loves Bobby, but he wants to murder Ricky. <laughs> Dude, he lost his truck. He stole it. <laughs> totally sold it. I, I love that. You you sold it. You said you you lost it. It's all in perspective. <laughs> I mean, of course the boss lost it when he gave it to me, right? <laughs> so, okay. Technically, <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure he could talk himself out of that bag, but um, you know, I mean, I agree with Ryan. This story. Like it's kind of a development of his friend seeing how much of a douche he is, and Vince Vaughn playing a fantastic douche. By the way, do you think Vince Vaughn got paid by word? Uh, no, I think they just <laughs> no, gave him the fifteen hundred. Because I, I, because I, I was really hoping to to do this movie, he got paid per per, per word because he was definitely the star of this movie because he had more lines than anybody else in the movie. I mean, John Favreau was writer and director. Director, I'm sure he didn't want to overdo himself with acting too. It's well, but but true. to me, I mean, the the, the comedy Very was true. everybody else just looking at him run his mouth the entire movie, just like I can't believe this guy doesn't shut up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like the um, 
And he thinks he's a badass doing it, like the scene with the, oh, you're the red dragon, and you see everybody going, this is not going to end well. Yeah. Um, which is, to me, one of the funnier scenes of the movie, because you, you, you see everybody's reaction going, just like slightly going, oh, fuck. Gosh, what was the black guy's name? The the Sean Combs? Yes, yeah, Sean Combs. I think he did a decent job for what he did. I don't think his lines were very well put together, though. Yeah, and I, I don't like Fomke. I do not like her in anything she's ever done. I, I actually think uh, Sean Combs. Uh, I don't think he was really acting. Really, I think he was just kind of reading the lines. To me, it was kind of phone home. It's kind of an extension of his personality type of thing. For at least from the interviews yeah, I've well, heard from. Yeah, that, not to mention, you know, he's obviously not an actor, but um, can can play the part where he's not suffering fools. Pretty yeah. pretty new. I, I don't think he's actually acting that personally. And actually, Vincent Pastor was my favorite character yes. in this movie because the presence right. he gives off. Yeah, I've seen him in a lot of mob movies. He's very well known for those types of roles. I think his go his job was really well done. I mean, he didn't really have very many lines, but he did a lot of storytelling with his face, yeah. his gestures and body language. I think he did great on that. I, I yeah. It's typecasting, though, but whatever. Yeah, for sure. Well, like, I mean, he's a big Italian. I mean, there's <laughs> there's not a lot of roles for uh, somebody of his heft, honestly. Besides playing the the, the muscle. Well, he, yeah, he, he is that guy. But but him having to react to Vince Vaughn's bullshit. Uh, I mean, was, was so damn funny. The, the the scene the there's the scene where like initial initially get in the limousine. He's going up and down and up and down to the window. I re I was really expecting him to stop. You know, get out of the car, beat up Vince Vaughn, and then you know, I was that's what I was hoping for, because you could tell by his fake facial expressions, he was like, "I'm gonna kill him." Yeah, and for idiots out there, um, New York is not easy to get a gun in. There's no question. What? So this was made in 2000. What? So it might have been easier then. No, New York has been a bitch about guns forever for a very yeah. long time. Which is why he got a starter pistol. Yeah. <laughs> oh, does it say the other good line in that? It's like, do you think I'm stupid? Of course I made it look like a starter starting starter pistol. <laughs> it's like, that would, to me, that was probably the best line in the entire movie. Why? Because you think he's stupid? Yes. Because <laughs> you have a character who's obviously seen too many mob movies talk about getting whacked and taking rides. And yeah. it's like, how many yeah. times are you going to watch Goodfellas, man? Come on. <laughs> Even Marlon I mean, Brando was, was like, "Stop." What's funny? It was it was a total kind of a kind of a serious flick, aside from Vince Vaughn just royally trying to screw everything up <laughs> as best he can. That's, that's you know, actually... I think my favorite part of this entire movie is the uh, brothers of the uh, brothers of the rice rockets. <laughs> that was oh, dude! When they even pull up when they're done like fighting each other in the middle of the street. Yeah. What that was, that? was hilarious. What face in love is he? He's the guy that you disliked, right? He's the the, the big black guy riding the street oh. bike. Was face in love. No, that was the big biker guy. Yeah, he was the he was the guy opposite Sean Combs for a while, right? Not really. I wouldn't say that. Because I because him pulling up on that uh, on that that crotch rocket made me laugh. Because he threw that guy yeah. that little helmet. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, wow, I'd hate to be riding up the back of that guy. <laughs> I mean, oh, just man. like the fact that they showed up like as a gang with all of that. He's got to, I got to get on the bike with the guy with no shirt. I mean, seriously, I'd be like, look, man, I left my bra at home. I can't, uh, I can't do this. I wonder if that was the genesis for the movie Biker Boys. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> um, crap. John, John Favreau, Favreau, how do you actually say it? Favreau. Um, but you said. Um, <laughs> he did an amazing job. I think acting as well as he did, playing it really seriously and directing and written, I was actually really impressed by that. I actually like him as an actor. He's a pretty, de he's pretty, me, he's a pretty decent actor, too. He's done a, a few films, and he's been pretty good for the ones that I've seen. Uh, well, I mean, you know, not to mention, um, I mean, he definitely was using acting because nobody else was going to star in his movie. He, I mean, he had a star in Vince Vaughn. You know what I mean? Like, you know, that guy is, is a list material. He's got the charisma that's going to, going to carry a movie. 
but you know who else are you going to put in there and, and and especially when he's writing it and directing it you're going to be pretty precious about it but at the same time i mean it's the guy that went on to do iron man so he, he's always been more comfortable behind the camera yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be honest. In this movie, the only way I want it carried is if it was being carried by six people. I, I can't, this I can't stand Vince Vaughn in this movie at all. I yeah. I mean, he did a fantastic job. I mean, the ceramic area was kind of fun too. Yeah, <laughs> sir, you can't smoke in here. Why you don't sell food? <laughs> um, I actually think Ryan has a good point about this is a a. And it, this is a drama, but Vince Vaughn turns it into comedy. It vaguely reminds me of how they did, was it Behind Emily Li- Enemy Lines? How it was just a standard act. It was a, a drama, and then you had Owen Wilson's character just smack dab in the middle of it, observing, observing, if, if that makes sense. Okay, I can see what you're saying. Yeah. So I, I didn't really take it that way until Ryan mentioned it, and I think that's a, that's a hell of a point. It really is just a standard low-level gangster movie, but with a guy who just keeps kind of trying to get himself killed. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, are we waiting for Ryan to call back? I mean, yeah, we're... Issues, people. It's all your fault. Ryan, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. So, what did you last hear? Um, that, uh, that I made a good point, and I kind of tuned out after that. <laughs> hey. Um, <laughs> I guess to... to so roughly saying, it's like this movie reminds me vaguely of the style of Behind Enemy Lines, where it was a movie, and you had another character who was just involved in it that really wasn't necessarily important. Like Behind Enemy Lines, uh, Enemy Lines, to me, similar to this. It was a story, and there was another layer of a story on top of it. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. And, and it's one of those movies that, if you take away that one key element, same thing with with uh, uh, behind enemy lines. You take away Owen Wilson from that, um, Vince Vaughn's co-star in uh, Wedding Crashers. You take him away from that, the same way you take Vince Vaughn away from this. It's it's a movie not worth. Um, you know, with just some generic ass person, you'd think it was just some dumbass B movie. I'll actually, I'll give you. Is that. it not a B movie? I mean, it's, it, it would it's be if it wasn't for Vince Vaughn. Ba- well, Behind Enemy Lines maybe is a little bit of a B-movie. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but this one, I mean, it, it's, it's a, the only reason it'd be classified as a B-movie is because of the budget. You know, but with the budget, they actually told a really unique story. Hmm. I, I, guess, I guess I could see this being a B-rated movie, especially after time. Because this is definitely not as known as some of his other movies he's in. Um, acting wise, I, I think acting wise, this, this movie is up there with hell. I mean, it's better acted than Avengers. <laughs> but honestly, it's not terribly difficult. No. No, it's really not. Scarlett Johansson really isn't that great. <laughs> they, well, uh, just so. I, I heard, I was listening to an interview the other day, and the, the, the guy was talking about it was some, it was a director. Um, who was actually making a, a movie for, for Penn Jillette. Hmm. Um, and I, I guess he, he was telling some story about some movie he was on and, and working with a, with a guy who was not an actor and, and the guy was nervous about it. And he, he was like, uh, like, man, I, well, I'm not an actor, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm this guy or whatever. And he's like, you know, that movie, babe, he's like, what the pig movie? He's like, yeah, the pig movie. He's like, yeah, well, what about it? He's like, that pig looks like a great actor, isn't he? Doesn't he? He's like, well, 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 yeah. He's like, he's not. He's a pig. Yeah. His point being is like, you can pretty much make a crappy actor look like a good actor if you have good direction and good editing. Yeah, that's true. But you at know, the end a of the good day, director is going to get what he wants out of the scene. That's true. And at the end of the day, when you have pig, you also get a bacon. I mean, you can eat the co-star. Now <laughs> you can't eat, you know, like some other co-stars because that's cannibalism. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> No, right. but I, I gotta say, um, I wasn't blown away by this movie, but I wasn't completely bored. I think it would just go with a three. Middle ground. Um, hmm. What about you, Ryan? Um, oh, yeah, I think it's a three, too. Right up the, right up the middle, nothing, not breaking any new ground, sort of a new twist on, on kind of a story that we've seen a thousand times. But that twist made it interesting, and, and even with the $5 million budget, you know, did a pretty damn good job. Yeah. This is this is where it gets a little difficult to me because I'm unfortunately I really don't like com- most comedies. For me, this is one point five. <laughs> wow. 
Yeah, I I didn't like it all that much. I literally had to force myself to watch it. You know, I was skipping around and doing this. It's like, I, Vince Vaughn, to me, I, if he toned it down a tad bit, to me, it would have been a much, much better movie. I think, for me, he went way over the edge. I realized that's what he was going for, but to me, it just, it was just, I couldn't stand it. All right. And so next, we're going to go to the X-Files um, miniseries? Uh, this is yeah. A reboot? They only have six. Yeah, six. It's, yeah, miniseries. So now I want to jump into this one because I've heard a lot of people talking crap about it. And, and say, I have saying, two. <laughs> huh? I have two. Yeah, and so I watched this, and I really don't see anything that's that different from the original X-Files. So nope, what is it, what is it actually right called? the hell where they left off. Yeah, it's the X Files. It's it's like the there it is reopen. Okay. Yeah, if you like the X Files, you're liking this one. If you didn't like the X Files and you're using this to get back back into it, you're not gonna like this one either. Yeah. So you know, I gotta say, for me, I I came to the X Files as a fan later in life. I didn't watch it when sure. it was first out on Fox, but me neither. Um, I caught up on it when it uh, ended up on Netflix. I ra- raced through it all. Um. And I gotta say, I was really happy that they brought back the, the David Duchovny's doing the really good Mulder, uh, Mulder lines. And I mean, one yeah. of the ones I gotta say was um, when he walks up and they're out in the garage, and this is exactly what he says word for word. There's something called the Venus Syndrome. It's a runaway global warming scenario that leads us to the brink of the sixth extin- extinction. Those with means prepare to move off the planet into space, which has already been weaponized against the poor huddle masses of humanity that haven't already been exterminated by the uber-violent fascist elites, if you believe in that sort kind of thing. I mean, like, how did he get through that, not only with a straight face, but to do it so smooth? <laughs> because, I mean, that whole thing, it's like, dear God. <laughs> I, I bet that took a couple of takes. What, Ryan, you were going to say something? I said because he's David Duchovny. And yeah, I mean, just the done. way he blurted that out like it was second nature, and he actually believed it. Yeah, oh, totally. Oh, I mean, every bit. I mean, he fell right back into that character. And since that, I mean, we've seen him do, you know, really good, interesting things. Uh, uh, even Evolution was a kind of a hysterical movie. Yeah. But I, um, I was thinking maybe. What's it called? The Californication? I, I, I haven't seen that yet, but I've heard it's great. Movie. See, I, I was thinking maybe it was believable because it's just kind of like Dan Aykroyd doing some as far out movies like Ghostbusters. The reason why it looks believable is because Dan Aykroyd actually believes it. So I'm thinking maybe there's a little bit of you know that in some of David Duchovny. Yeah, there could be. I mean, I I've actually pretty much bro- you know gone through all of them so far, and I mean, I don't get why people are dogging it so much. I mean, you, you've seen, you watched it. The I've watched the original, not the I. Had, I unfortunately wasn't able oh, to that's watch. Right. Yeah, sorry. Um, see, I'm trying to think. So, does this mean that X Files would not make it in modern, like you know, 2016 reboot type of thing? Probably Do you think not. it's something that would only work in? No, I think they actually. I think they updated it pretty pretty well. I mean, they 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 went with. I mean, the zeitgeist. I, I guess you could say. Um, you know, they, they they brought it into obviously modern times and, and and sort of updated the conspiracies a little more, a little more complicated. You know, slightly. Um, Joel McHale as the conspiracy theorist, by the way, freaking nailed it. That is such an awesome character for him. So, yeah. do do you think it runs into the issue where in modern times, you know, they have to have an excuse, they have to have an explanation for everything. Like, the mystery of things has kind of gone away. Like, um, for example, like, back say, in the 20s, you know, the mystery of the Orient. Um, I will probably go home and watch episode 6 tonight, but um, as far as I've seen, they have kept the mystery of things going. In some of the episodes after the first one, the pilot episode. Do they make it, like, over the top? I mean, or did it fit exactly in line with the original? If I was going to pick nitpick, there's, like, two episodes that got pretty weird and goofy. So it fits like the original, because there's a couple of really goofy uh, episodes in the original series. You mean, like, the five-mile-long shroom that would pull people down and have them trips as they slowly get, uh, like, turned into... um, 
food for the for I can't think of what yeah. the ooze was that they were in like some primordial ooze that disintegrated their body or the episode of cops. Oh, yeah. So and so what do you think, Ryan? Um for for what specifically? I just you th- like we were just saying, do you, do you think, think it, it will uh relate to new kit new viewers? Oh, um, no, I, I think this is, this is something if you're, if you're interested in, in X-Files, you have to have the context, you know, but I don't think X-Files, this, this part was after a new audience. I think they, they were doing this because there, there was so much, so much groundswell of, of people screaming for this to come back, you know, and, and it kind of happened off of one particular interview with, uh, with Gillian Anderson, um, Gillian. saying that, oh yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd be down to do that that show again and same with david duchovny and then so, everyone's like well let's do this you know so this was kind of like inside baseball this was fans sort only of. kind of like they did with the firefly movie serenity i mean yeah kind of except they actually put some production value and did like a like a six episode thing i mean i guarantee they spent more on this than they did well maybe um are you talking about the movies the x-files the or the x-files show well the shows i would say um, that they spent considerably less on this because of they're only doing six episodes and the actual X-Files went for like 10 years. 15? Well, no, no, no. I actually meant uh, this six episodes in comparison to like a Serenity movie. Oh, oh okay. I see what you're saying. Um, but I mean, they had some good CGI special effects, which I'm sure were expensive at the time. So, for so Serenity. we're getting, we're getting close to having to wrap this segment up. So I guess the quest, the last question to be, is this something that you think Xbox X, excuse me, X-Files fans and non-fans should watch? I think if you used to watch X Files but were on the fence about this new thing, totally, totally watch it. If you're if you're kind of on the fence about X Files in general, go back and get some context from the original shit. Yeah, I mean, if you guys have some time and you really want to watch some good TV, which is I guarantee is what everybody was upset about, you can sit down and watch this. This is actually worth a watch, and it went totally. from ninety three to two thousand one. So it was nine seasons. Hmm. And with that being said, just let you know, we do have a Facebook page. Do you love us, hate us? You know, if you give us hate mail, at least be creative. None of the fat person sucks or... He's fat. Right? Or you guys hate Nazis. Who doesn't do. hate Nazis? Really? Um, so just be creative. Come on. Uh, you know, just give us the reasons why we're wrong. Why John's wrong. Or Ryan or James is wrong. I'm never wrong. <laughs> I, don't, I don't make mistakes. <laughs> You gotta have an opinion. <laughs> and my opinion's right. Exactly. Because I'm the one. I'm the guy on this mic. Um, so uh, no, you can claim it's right for you. <laughs> Everything's relative, man. So next is movie news. So uh, Ryan, you're up. If you got movie news. Um. Well, movie news kind of sucks lately. It's a you know a whole bunch of comic book stuff we've said a thousand times. So no need to go over that again. Um, one uh, article sort of caught my eye, which was kind of a fun read. Uh, came from uh, CinemaBlend.com. Uh, Rooney Mara was uh, a character in Pan, the uh, shitty Peter Pan retelling, which is not worth going into how much I hate that movie again, <laughs> but basically goes off about how the, the, the movie was just eviscerated by critics, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and she actually gave sort of an interview saying that why she still hates being a part of that movie. And it was it was quite entertaining. What movie? Pan. Pan. Oh, OK. Wait, wait, wait. That was your movie news about somebody being interviewed? Yeah, about hating that movie. And well, just, you know, I, I, I just thought it was interesting. I've got, but, a couple, um, I've got a couple of them if you don't. Well, the, the only other thing that I was going to bring up, which, again, is just, you know, BS pop culture nonsense. Um, just when you thought they couldn't squeeze another movie out of the Taken franchise, they're making a TV show. Well, at least is Liam Nielsen. God, I hope no. Okay. At least, at, at least, it's not taken for because at this point, nobody can be taken. I mean, it, See, that's the, that's the thing is, is they're going to turn this into a to a twenty four situation where this this one guy is going to be solely responsible for saving the world a thousand times in a row. Well, let me let me clear this up. Mm. Jack Bauer did a whole lot better than. <laughs> I, I just don't think it's I think it's gonna fail. I give it a season, maybe a season and a half. Oh, I give this four episodes before people are like, Why the shit are we watching this? Right. And so I'll I got a couple of pieces of movie news. One, 
being, I'm not sure how I feel about this. Rhonda Rowdy Rousey says she's always wanted to be Seamus from, uh, what? Oh, from Metroid? From Metroid. What do you think? Because I'm. Oh, shit, I'm, that would be dope. Because I'm kind of over the, the Ronda Rousey thing, but I was thinking, give her some acting lessons. She could play the character perfect because she does I mean, have. A, well, what acting lessons does one really need to play Samus? A uh, uh, completely mute character throughout the entire thing. She but, stays in a suit. It, there, it would be kind of up her alley, but at the same time, one of the most badass female characters ever made. So do what they did for like Darth Vader, just dub somebody over the few lines they're going to give her? Yeah, basically. Well, she's redoing uh, Patrick Swayze's flick. What? Oh, shit. That's right. Oh, yeah. Roadhouse. That's right. She's going to yeah. do I mean, Roadhouse, gonna, right? Yeah. You're all up and happy about that? Not really. Well, wasn't she a bouncer? She, I think she played a bouncer in her little cameo for the Expendables uh, yep. uh, shitty movie. Yeah. So I've I've got a, a little bit of an uh, of an update of a of a comic book that Ryan and I like. According to Tech Buffalo, never heard of Wolverine Three is to follow uh, the Logan Old Man Logan storyline. You're trying to tell which me would like be that. really really cool and it's, really really good timing and and just they're fools if they let that opportunity pass them by. See, I, yeah, no, I agree because at this point the guy who's playing him is just he's. He's right at the age where it would be perfect. Yeah. And then, then what's going to happen is they can do a fresh phrase, a fresh reboot of the Logan character with hopefully better writing. Well, what's, what's interesting about it is, is this like perfect storm of events. One, you have this unbelievably great story in Old Man Logan. You have an actor who's getting to the age to play said great story. Um, and becoming completely unviable for playing the character any longer, obviously because of the healing factor. He doesn't age, and so he's got to look the he same age. So all of a sudden, if he's, you know, looking gray-haired, I mean, it's just going to be impractical for them to do all the extra makeup and make him look young. But Wolverine does age. Slowly. But very, very, very slowly. Yeah, but he ages. Well, I mean, but I mean, that's why they have to do this one in the future. I get you. I get you. So, and here's if you follow the Facebook page, that's where a good portion of our stories get posted. Here's one that James posted earlier in the week. Todd McFarlane deba uh, debuts first images from new Spawn animated series. Oh, I can't freaking wait. Um, so, it should be interesting to see um, where it goes. Yeah. Because the, the first one was one of the. I think one of the few anime, anime movies or television series I remember that have the very dark, gothic undertones and the feeling. There was nothing about that cartoon that wasn't, well, honestly, perfect. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was, like I said, it was dark. It was an adult cartoon before, you know, hentai made it big over here. <laughs> so, Wrong type of adult. What? I don't remember that happening in Spawn. <laughs> There was a couple oh. seeds that were on verge. Oh, oh, jeez! And the other one that should make all uh, the other two happy is Blade Runner. Warner Brothers sets and January. Just, just looking at the images of of uh, what they're what the kind of showing. Yes, Ryan. What you you uh, it, you phased yeah. out there for a second? Yeah, meow, meow. Oh yeah, sorry. And I was, yeah, was going to say and another yeah. eh, note. Yeah. Blade Runner, Warner Brothers sets January 2018 release date for sequel, which means with a January release date, they're not even sure if it's going to do any good, because otherwise they would release it in December when it was guaranteed to get views. I don't care. I, you know, I, I actually, I love the way the Blade Runner looks. I'm not a big fan of the movie overall, but January is kind of a funky release date, don't you think? Ryan? I mean, it's it's it's, it's it's a. Who cares? Obviously, no one's ever. I mean, it's you're not after Oscar stuff, so I mean, it's the kind of time when those sorts of those sorts of things come out. I think Blade but, Runner won some Oscars. But I'm thinking if it was a, if if they were really sure it was going to be a big box office movie, they would release it in December or sometime in the summer where it would get some eyes on it. January is kind of historically a very poor time for movies. Yeah, no, no, not a whole lot typically 
comes out around there. I mean, you know, you have your your obviously your romantic comedies that are the month after and into that stuff. But yeah, I mean, obviously the big giant things that the all the advertising's for is they're they're aiming for the either the Christmas or summer release. But Some, according to IMDb, uh, the original Blade Runner 1982 was nominated for 18, and it won 10. Wow. That's so, actually impressive. I would say. I mean, are no, we I expecting mean, that from this though? Hell no. But I mean, so, yeah, it, I think I think they're 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 doing. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it, it uh, could be could be something. Yeah, it could be. I got a little but piece of it. information for people out there. Um, I don't know. I mean, John, did you actually watch it? Watch Death Note. No, I don't oh, actually a little bit, uh, but they're going to be making a death note um, by Warner Brothers for it's an adaptation for the for movie. So and wait, I kind of am excited for it. A couple of things. Um, just the audience. You got to at least there. tell them what death note is. I was getting there. Just making sure. That's awesome. Anyways, <laughs> um, so it's an mm-hmm. anime. I was just checking with John to see if he had to watch. I don't think Ryan has. Nope. All right, but you know it's a pretty cool one. The pre- premise of this is the guy becomes find gets in contact with a notebook that if he writes a name in it, his little kind of demonic friend goes out and kills him in very interesting ways. So that's what it's about. It's actually pretty cool. Um, and you know he learns about shenanigans that happen with it. Um, the one that I would like to see them make if they're going to be doing this is a paranoia agent trans tra- you know trans over. Ooh. And paranoia agent is one of those really really interesting deep psychological uh, anime hmm. with real really interest you know hard death scenes and things like that that I enjoyed so. I honestly would just be happy with a live action Akira. Just get it over with. Either release it or don't make it. That's all I want. Yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing them doing something off of like Witch, Witch, Witch Hunter, Hunter Robin. Robin. I mean, I like that one too. So. There's, um, I, I don't know if anybody who's watching this is a big fan of animes, but James and I, I don't know about Ryan. Ryan likes some. He's seen Berserk and uh, Helsing. Um, we're, we're, we're a huge fan of animes. Oh, yeah. At least. Yeah, I've got- I've seen definitely more than than, than your average non-initiate. But yeah. um, when it comes to anime, I mean, there there is some untapped, amazing stories out there that could very, very easily be adapted. It's just a matter of, of getting the funding for them. I mean, I think Akira has been in production, you know, pre-production health for 30 for years, five or six years. No, yeah, at least 10. I The only issue I have with, with Death Note and really bringing – with comic book, whether it's an American animation or Japanese animation, an anime, the only problem is the interpretation into live action is, it, to me, is always on the razor's edge. It either turns amazing or Howard the Duck. There's well, never in between. I mean, the, yeah, the thing about that is that you have so much source material, like, uh, um, I don't know how many, how, I don't remember how many seasons Death Note is, but quite a bit. But you have so much material that you're trying to cram into one. It's like what happens with the OVAs. Yes. So, yes, I yes, mean, yes, yes, that yes. Uh, that's what they they really have issues with. Um, and for people out there, OVAs are pretty much just to summarize what the cartoon or the, what the anime was really about in a, a movie format. Yeah, so they'll, they'll take like 25 episodes and turn it into a two-hour movie. Yeah, that's I mean, well, the first animes I ever saw was X, and they did that. Don't watch the OVA of X. If you do, watch the first episode of the TV series. It'll explain the whole two hours of the yeah. OVA. Trust so, me. Um, but, you know, uh, there's a few that I would like to see them do before Death Note. I'm interested in how they're going to do it. There's people online that are, like, screaming at it, like, don't make a live-action um, Death Note America, because you guys have screwed it up. Shyamalali Ding Dong, that's all on your door gas. Seriously. <laughs> I mean, you, got, you had everything handed to you. He who must you not be crap. named. You made crap. Stop making crap. You're full of crap. You piece of crap. <laughs> well, well, that I means... hate you, you jerk off crap. Jesus. <laughs> I mean, come on. You're a piece of crap. Come on. Kill you. Come we... on. Come on, Ong, it's over with already. I'll beat him with a baseball bat, just like paranoid. Anyway. <laughs> so, so, ladies and gentlemen, we're, we're coming up you to the of end crap. of this episode. Um, <laughs> How do so, I really feel? You're a piece of crap. <laughs> Jeez. Um, 
<laughs> We're coming up to I'll the end of the episode, and next like next week's uh, next week's pick is the theater pick, and we've all decided we're going to go see Deadpool. All right. And so this is going to be either it's going to be an awesome episode, at least I hope so, because well I've seen it. Um. And so next week's TV show, do we have anyone for that? Um. No. Not off the top of my head, but I do have some in my list that we can pull from. So it just it might be a dead probably will be Deadpool only. If not, it'll be a surprise. So I gave May two thousand one a much deserved one point five out of five. James gave it a three out of five. Ryan gave it a three out of five. Next week is Deadpool. And the man in High Castle. We haven't done that one yet, right? No. Not that I remember. And the man in High Castle. Okay, what he said. And so <laughs> and so as always, thank you for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>